With the London 2012 Olympic Games coming this summer, sport of swimming has again been placed in the spotlight. In Beijing 2008, 94% of the races were won with the Speedo Laser, and companies quickly followed with speed altering rubber suits of their own. The suits raised a lot of controversy, threatened the integrity of the sport, and exposed some flaws of the governing body, FINA. Essentially, they were a big game changer in this sport. In this video, we will present the evolution of swimwear, the science behind the technology, and exactly how FINA's vague rules allowed this controversy to happen in the first place. Lastly, we've also interviewed some swimmers who will give us their perspectives on swimwear and technology in the sport. Enjoy. And this is Craig McCord, and he is the coach of the Swimmers with a Disability program here at the Paralympics. Hello, Craig. How are you? Pleasure to meet you, Rick. Good to see you, sir. Hold on. This is going to be on YouTube. I know it. <laughs> It'll be the biggest viral clip ever. Yeah, yeah. You think Paris Hilton was popular? All right, buddy. It's time to uh, stand up and get personal. Like this? Okay, turn around, and I'm going to have to touch your bum, sir. Oh, for God's sakes. Come here often? <laughs> I'm seeing dots. Is that normal? Yeah. Don't worry. So am I. <laughs> Throughout the history of the Olympics, swimsuits have changed drastically. At the start, they were sort of a fashion statement, and now they've been designed and engineered to give athletes uh, competitive advantages. Here we have the very first Olympics. It's a quite conservative suit, made of wool mostly. Then 20 years later, it's shown a little bit more skin. And of course, the women, they were also had their own suits, which were as well conservative. Then in 1932, the Australian swimming team got some flack for showing too much sh shoulder skin. And then in the 1936 Olympics, it was the first time, time men had bare chests. <laughs> Showing bare skin on your shoulders and having bare chests wasn't a big deal. Now, in the 1970s, there was a big fashion statement. Very tight suits and definitely displaying some national pride. noted that this is a time where the fabrics were starting to come into play. Here we have a nylon suit that didn't absorb as much water as the wool and silk ones of the past. And the females as well. Now we see an evolution in the 1992 Olympics. The suits now had lycra in them, which was really designed for the pool. And the male suits as well. But now in 2000, it's the first time that suits were really designed to give it a competitive advantage. Here we have a full body suit that was designed to reduce drag. And then in 2008, really trying to push the limits of what a fabric is, we have the laser racer. Developed by top scientists from around the world, the suit's fabric was tested at NASA in the wind tunnels used to check the aerodynamic qualities of space shuttles. So heading into the 2012 Olympics, we'll no longer see full body suits or the laser razor. They've been banned. But now we have the Fast Skin 3, which is this one here and the male version. So that was the history of the Olympic suits in a nutshell. We're now going to go to our expert in the field, Davis Woolley. He's worked with Finis Swimwear Company to help design their latest swimwear technology and he's also the Chief Technology Officer with SwimSram News. What exactly about the suits gave them such an advantage? So the polyurethane suits provided a lot less friction and were able to trap air uh, inside of them to make swimmers more buoyant, as well as providing extra compression, which textile suits can't do because they're far less elastic and uh, have a far higher coefficient of friction. 
can you walk us through the events of 2008? Uh, so what happened is in 2008, uh, Speedo launched the laser and it kind of shocked the swimming world. Nobody expected that that kind of suit would be allowed, a suit that had these kind of panels that were uh, basically rubber. And so all the other manufacturers decided, okay, we're gonna start making these suits with uh, rubber panels as well. And certain manufacturers just went further than others. And what happened is, is that a uh, company, small company called Jaked, that was uh, out of Europe, out of a garage actually, uh, started putting out suits that were completely made of this uh, polyurethane material and they were thick and they were buoyant um, and no air could escape from them and swimmers found this suit and they started wearing it and all these uh, swimmers who had contracts first in 2008 there was a bunch of swimmers uh, Brendan Hansen was a good example he had a contract with Nike and he couldn't compete in a Nike suit even though he tried I mean the laser was just too good um, and at, the, at that stage in the world, uh, where the times are so close together, 2% makes all the difference, and that's what the laser was said to give you, is 2% over the next best suit. So uh, all these uh, athletes were forced to either decide between their sponsorship contracts and the money that they were getting uh, for support, and uh, whether they are going to wear the best suit that was a different manufacturer's. And so... That carried on very much into 2009, where Speedo Suit wasn't the best anymore. It was now this Jaked company, which didn't have any athletes. Uh, they're, they're a small company, and uh, all of a sudden, athletes were starting to ditch their sponsors in favor of Jaked. So there's a huge turnover there um, of athletes having to switch, being forced to switch to wear a different manufacturer suit to be even able to compete. And uh, this caused a lot of problems with their current sponsors, with their money, with their financing, um, different international federations, uh, national federations too, were, were tossed about in this way where they're forced to, sw to switch month by month. And what happened was FINA said, okay, we, we're being forced by the swimming community to put an end to this. Um, we have to do something about it. And the problem was is that FINA was very slow off the mark to do anything to make a decision and it basically caused them to put a temporary list in place where they were approving suits basically with no real rules uh, on what you could or couldn't do um, everybody was pretty lost uh, they were arbitrarily coming up with rule new rules month by month and when you're developing a new product that may take four or five years typically to get onto the market um, Fina would, you'd put out your new product, it would get approved one month, the next month it wouldn't be approved at all. So it was really hard for both swimmers and manufacturers to kind of, to kind of know where the boundaries were, to sign contracts, to get their deals in place. Uh, and so in 2009, finally Fina said after the world championships, um, after all the world records were broken, finally Fina said, okay, we're putting an end to this, we're going to come up with some solid rules here that the manufacturers must abide by and they tried to reset it all for 2010 and it's worked pretty well so far. Prior to the 2008 Olympics, FINA really didn't have an in-depth set of rules to regulate what swimmers could wear. The only guidelines provided were that the swimwear could not be transparent and that before any swimwear of new design could be used in a competition, the manufacturer had to first submit it to FINA for approval. So, what are the new rules and regulations put in by FINA that have been active for the past two years and will be in effect at the 2012 London Olympic Games? According to FINA, the new swimsuits for men should not extend above the navel or below the knee. For females, the swimsuit should not cover the neck or extend past the shoulders, nor should it extend below the knee. The material guidelines have also changed. Going from a very vague guideline where polyurethane, rubber and lycra suits were all allowed to a very specific set of standards. These new standards outline that a suit must be of textile fabric and any material added onto the surface of the suit shall not close the open mesh structure of the base textile fabrics. FINA has put in place strict material thickness and buoyancy guidelines. The suit material has a maximum thickness of 0.8 mm and should not have a buoyancy effect above 0.5 newtons, measured after the application of a vacuum. In addition, zippers and other fastening materials that were previously allowed are now banned. Now since we've given you a background about the controversy, let's hear it from an athlete's perspective. 
What was your experience like with the Speedo Laser at the 2008 Olympics? Um, it was an interesting experience because it was the first time we've ever had that kind of suit and putting it on for the first time was a hassle and you know getting there and having to change your whole schedule based on this one suit like you have to get in earlier to get time to put on the suit it was a little bit um, a little bit much to change um, right before the Olympics but then again it really helped some people and so it was a it was a positive step in swimming. What was it like putting on one of these suits for the first time and racing in them? Uh, it was, well, first of all, it took about 45 minutes to put on for how tight it was and everything. But it, um, it felt pretty good. You, you could dive in and glide a lot farther than if you weren't wearing the suit. Yeah, it was really fast. Do you feel that an athlete who didn't wear the suits was unable to compete at the same level, even if they were just as good a swimmer? Yeah, um, during Worlds in 2009, it was definitely those who had the better suits were ultimately going faster. And so um, I don't think as much with the laser, but with the jacket and like more of the uh, rubber suits, it was definitely an uh, advantage. Do you think FINA did the right thing changing the rules? I think so. At, um, as I said, in 2009, it got a little out of hand and the suits were really, really helping the swimmers too much. It was starting to be all about the equipment you had instead of your level of uh, swimming. Do you feel that an athlete who didn't wear the suits was unable to compete at the same level, even if they were just as good a swimmer? Uh, yeah, for sure. It it became like a money thing too. Um, yeah, athletes that could afford the suit uh, or even the other suits like the Arena um, X Glide could take like take off more time just because they're wearing a faster suit than uh, people who didn't have it. With every company launching new suits, how do you select the suit that you will race in? Um, personally, I just choose whatever I'm comfortable with. Like I'm, I'm usually swimming in a, a speedo, and um, and it's just like what I've been training with, or what I've been racing with in the past. And uh, I actually raced at Olympic trials with an FS2, even though they came out with a better suit before that. So it's just what I feel comfortable with. Speedos recently launched the FS3. Have you tried the suit, and what's your experience with it? Um, yeah, I tried it two weeks ago, and um, it's nothing like the the old full body suits, just because it only covers this much of you. But it comes up higher than the other jammer that they had, so it attempts to hold your core more. Um, but I, I like it better than like last year's, which was just the, I don't know, I think it was the Laser Elite. Um, but it's, it's not, it's not anything like the full body suit. In your opinion, what effect will the suits have on the 2012 Olympics? Um, the FS3s, or the new, uh, new system as they call it, will definitely impact the sport. Um, just hopefully it won't get out of, as out of hand as it has in the past. one cup of water. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see this, but what will happen is I'm going to just pour it into this right here. And you want to hold this down? So, yep, 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 just. so this is just a regular polyester suit. You'll see that the water just kind of soaks right in and spills out through the other way. Um, now, I, w I was trying this at home and I was like, well, let's, what should we do to make it cooler? So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to fill it up with a full liter of water and with a semi-willing TA. Steph, could you please come up? <laughs> so, I don't even know. Do I have enough water? That's a liter. It's a liter of water. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Hey, you there's a hole. hole. <laughs> You're going to hold it. Just, just to be really careful. You're going to hold it this way. So that it's 
group's going to be the thing, right? You got it? Okay, so this is, a, this is the speedo laser eraser. It's now banned um, because of the rubber panels. And I'm going to, I guess I'll have to... Careful, your mark depends on this. Climb up. This wasn't in my job description. Okay, so I have a liter of water here, and I'm just going to pour it into... This might, I don't know, this will be interesting. I'm just... You said you tested a little bit. They said things. Don't drop so it's it's pretty much all. So what you can see is that the suit really is impermeable. The water does not get through either way. So that's one of the reasons. Is it dripping? Nope. That's one of the reasons why the suit was banned in the first place. Just because the material is really not a fabric. Anyways, yeah, you can you can poke it and just. <laughs> The sport of swimming has changed a lot since 2008. Gone are the full-length rubber bodysuits, replaced with stricter guidelines on the materials allowed and other rules that keep the focus on swimming ability rather than equipment. In general, swimmers seem to have adapted well to the new rules, and most of the swimmers are swimming close to or have surpassed the times that they were swimming back in 2008. The evolution of swimwear has shown us that advancements in suit material have been a part of swimming since the very beginning and most likely will be a part of the future. It will be interesting to see what the elite swimmers will be wearing in London this year and to also keep an eye on the brand new suits that companies will be coming out with in the future. Thank you for watching our presentation.